Hello viewers and welcome to a well a tutorial video I guess uh, somebody asked me uh, what settings I use for uh, my PlayStation emulator which is um, EPSXE uh, version 1. Point, well whatever version it is uh, yeah let's go to shit it doesn't even say well it's version 1.7 or something like that but uh, anyways yeah uh, well yeah I use a for some for Final Fantasy IX, I, I have used this PSX Emulation Cheater 2.5 for uh, Beatrix codes and character swap codes, but whatever. Uh, for the video right here, this is, well, if you just go to configure, it'll go past that. This should look familiar to uh, to you now, as far as uh, the interface goes, if, you have, if you've actually dabbled with this program a little bit. Now, if you have like a slower system, I recommend this plugin right here for your video. Uh, just make sure that your video card actually supports Direct 3D. If you have one of those crappy, like, um, I don't know, if you have one of those crappy, like, video cards, it just, uh, it all it does is basically you can do, all you can do is basically browse the internet uh, and watch video and not have, like, any 3D capabilities. And, uh, yeah, these pl you might have to find, like, a software pro plugin, which is... Uh, I don't know. They they have them. On, if you Google them, you can find like software plugins for this emulator. But uh, yeah, for like lower end systems, this is the plugin I used to use like on my laptop. And uh, yeah, well, my video card's an HD video card. That's why all my videos are HD, obviously, because that's the way they're recorded. Um, for full screen mode here, when you start the program, usually what I like to do is I like to actually choose a resolution that's compatible with your desktop or the same resolution for example um, I actually run my computer on HDTV and the, and the best resolution or the most compatible that looks the nicest is this one right here 1360 by 768 it's probably going to be different for your system a uh, good way to check that I don't know if you're using Windows 7 but if you go to like pro if you just click anywhere on your desktop here go to properties you can actually check your resolution and uh, that's what I like to use for um, for the full screen mode here and uh, color depth 32 bit it doesn't really matter it, as far as I know or as far as most people they have a 32 bit system so they should be able to run uh, the color depth at 32 bit as far as texture quality is concerned well <laughs> it depends on your computer I mean basically these settings right here are uh, dependent on your system if you have a lot of RAM and a lot of processor speed sure just go with this one here best colors more RAM needed if not just put don't care use drivers default textures that's fine or choose any other any of these other options uh, might be I mean you might have to play around with it a little bit so oops fucking microphone goofing up on me again uh, for texture filtering here uh, what I like to do is I like to put it on extended removes black borders and in order for that to go into effect you need to have high res textures here uh, at stretched and yeah it says in parentheses there filtering needed texture filtering okay and yeah, yeah I, this is the one I like to use right here uh, for other games like they have a lot of sprites and stuff like that like uh, I don't know like Breath of Fire 3 is a good example of an RPG that uses a lot of sprites as opposed to 3D and textures, you might want to try like uh, standard plus smooth or, or extended plus smooth, you know, for games like that. But for most of the games I've been playing lately, yeah, I've been using this one. And then uh, graphics card, RAM, or whatever, you can pick all the way up to 128, or you can just auto detect. I like auto detect because it works fine. And then uh, for frame rate, yeah, you want to use the frames per second limit that if you uncheck this here uh, <laughs> your game might run at like Mach 30 like it'll be going so fast you won't even know what's going on so yeah just make sure that's checked um, I usually like to put my FPS limit at 60 frames per second you can put it lower if you want but that's what I put mine as uh, just to just to run the program Obviously, I record games at a lower frame rate, and it's barely noticeable, but yeah, whatever. Uh, compatibility, off-screen drawings. Well, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that I just kind of, you just kind of have to experiment around with. Uh, 
if you're having problems getting it to run, just use this one. Standard okay for most games. I, I use this one right here. It shows more stuff. I don't know. It doesn't seem to affect it any any uh, any way for me. So hardware fast, not all cards support it. Yeah, sure. You can also use none, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. Emulated VRAM, whatever. You can you can choose this one right here if you're having problems with uh, with speed. But yeah, I don't I don't really have that problem. So and then I usually have these checked off because they're they're supposed to help a lot with some of the textures and games. And then uh, yeah, I got disable screensaver on here because yeah, if you're playing a game when when you're running this program uh, on your desktop, the uh, the desktop does not detect that the program is actually running and anything's on the screen. So eventually your screensaver will kick in and it might screw up your game. So yeah, make sure that's checked off because you don't want to have your screensaver come on while you're playing the game. I mean, that's bullshit. And for uh, special game fixes, well, again, these are, these are kind of like... I don't even need that on there. I, I was trying out Dragon Warrior 7 or just fucking around with it. But yeah, a lot of these are situational. It just depends on the game you're playing. Uh, yeah, like just frame buck buffer access for like Final Fantasy 7, and you might need to like Google some of these uh, for like certain games to find out which settings or which game fixes are best for which game. But for the most part, I don't really need any of this, so I don't really check them off. If I was playing Final Fantasy 9, I would probably check this one. But yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't I need that right now, so alright. Now for sound. This is the plugin I use here. Eternal SPU plugin 1.41. <clears throat> and again, you can actually Google these plugins, download them, and uh stick them in the plugins folder in the directory, which would actually be here. If you go to the directory where your emulator is, um yeah. You can stick all the plugins in here, and you have access to all the plugins, and your emulator will notice them, and you can configure them there. Um, yeah, for your BIOS here, this is very, 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 very important. If you don't have this BIOS file here, you can find this file uh, if you Google it. Uh, yeah, you might want to write it down or pay, copy and paste it somewhere. It's SCPH1001. Basically, in order for this emulator to run, you need to have a BIOS file in this folder right here, or else it will not run. And for memory cards, yeah, you can download mem man managers for your for your memory card or whatever. Patches, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything there. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, that's all other bullshit. Yeah, but for the sound I usually like to use direct sound, audio out thread, um you know, wait for X X A buffer or whatever. That's I think that has something to do with uh if you the game you're playing has a uh, FMV or whatever, like you know, the cutscene part portions of the game. Uh, yeah, you wanna have the sound of enabled obviously, so yeah, I wanna check that off. And uh see what else here. C D ROM. Well, these should already come packaged with the uh, emulator that you download, but the one I use is uh, the WinNT Win2K Core 1.7.0. That's the one I use. Seems to work fine. Uh, yeah, I I actually don't. Well, it actually doesn't matter unless you're playing the game straight off a of CD. I just burn all the ISOs to hard drive and uh and do it like that. Yeah, you can run a CD-ROM or you can run an ISO. All mine are ISOs. They're just, you know, they're on my hard drive as a disk image, and I run the game like that. Um, let's see what else. Gamepad. Yeah, if uh, if you have a gamepad or a USB gamepad, I actually have a Logitech uh, USB gamepad. I'm not really sure what the model number is, but yeah, you can actually configure. If you have a controller plug-in, you can actually configure buttons in this area right here. So yeah, that's kind of nice. So yeah, you can just click on this pick a different button if you want to obviously that's bad for me I just changed that to the same button as something else but you can switch it back by just <coughs> clicking on the button 
this setting up here dual and analog that just depends on what type of controller you have I have both a analog and a digital controller so I just click on both there and uh, let's see what else yeah that's basically it for a controller oh yeah and I've also heard you can actually hook up a 360 controller to your computer and uh, use that so yeah if you have a Xbox 360 you can actually hook up that uh, controller to your computer and uh, and use it as like a gamepad for your computer and uh, <clears throat> yeah I didn't even know that until uh, I was in Texas for Primo last year before uh, we deployed to Iraq there were a whole bunch of guys who were like well, I've got a 360 controller will that work on my computer I'm like I don't know dude give it a shot he plugged it in tried configuring it with the emulator here and it worked I was like holy shit dude that's cool yeah I didn't even know that so that was that was pretty nice no, we don't just sit around and play games all day in the fucking army. We actually have shit to do, but... Yeah, we work hard and then we play hard, too. Um... What else? The fuck? Oh, oh yeah. Well, one thing I didn't mention before that I might... It would probably be a good idea. Uh, yeah, for my videos... Well, all my videos are HD, and if you... Hello, this is Veteran O... Yeah, and I'm gonna pause that. Shut the hell up. Uh, yeah, for my videos here, you can actually view them all, all the way up to 720p here. So, yeah, if uh, if you if you have been vo viewing it on 360p, and you do have a decent internet connection, you can actually bump, uh, bump the picture quality up to 720p, if you so choose. So, yeah, I, I usually do that for... Uh, other HD videos that I watch and yeah that's pretty nice otherwise um, yeah that's about it if you have any other questions about this emulator that I haven't gone over just let me know because yeah a lot of this stuff like it might be kinda hard to find this but if you just google this particular file name right here like if you type this in in google you should be able to fi find it somewhere and, I, and I'm guessing a lot of people that can't get this emulator to run is because they're not they don't have this particular file right here yeah, if you don't have this file right here this emulator will not work it's a bios file for the uh, the system and every system has that bios in it and you know like if it was an actual playstation if you if you did not have the chip in your PlayStation that had that file uh, built into, uh, integrated into the hardware, uh, the PlayStation would not boot up. It would not work. So that's that's one thing you got to keep in mind. And when you get the BIOS file downloaded, you obviously want to stick it in this folder right here. And yeah, you can. I, I think this memory manager thing. I think it already comes with the emulator. I'm not really sure. I I might have had to download that separately. I don't know. I haven't downloaded it for a while, so. And actually, I transferred this file from an older version of this program to here. That way, I could use the save files that I already had. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, shaders. You can download shaders with this. Um, if you have a higher-end system. Uh, yeah, this emulation cheater. I could actually make a whole video on how to, like... You know, with Beatrix codes in Final Fantasy IX, show show you all the glitchy stuff that happens if you put like three VVs in your party or like three Beatrixes or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't want this one. I want to actually change this back to OpenGL because that looks much better on my system and it runs fine. Yeah, don't try and <coughs> use this plugin if you if you have a slow computer because it will run slow as fuck. I mean, on my laptop, this plug-in right here was really really slow so yeah I, I don't recommend this one if you don't if you uh, if you don't have a fast computer so yeah, and then you, with this plug-in you can use like shaders and stuff to beef up the graphics a little bit you can get you can download custom shaders to make games like Final Fantasy 7 appear in like uh, what is it what do they call that uh, shit like the Wind Waker graphics, uh, what the fuck, cell shaded, that's it. Yeah, like cell shaded graphics, if, if you so choose. I mean, they're all over the net, you can find them anywhere. I haven't really downloaded any of that stuff, but yeah, you can find stuff out there. And uh, for like N64 emulator, hell, you can download patches that uh, 
beef up the textures in Ocarina of Time. I mean, I've got one of those, so that, that looks pretty good, actually. Well, anyways, I hope this helped people. Uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. This is Veteran0121 signing off, and see you next time.